hello there or happy sunday to all of you all right and thank you so much for being here on my live streaming before we enter march and we wrap up the month of february and um i can see karen i can see city i can see tehong i can see emily jonathan chikit that's amazing thank you so much all right by the way if you guys can hear me right now and uh you are able to see me uh what i'll appreciate if you can just hit on the the thumbs up or send me some hearts so that I know that you are able to hear me before I start the Facebook live streaming today, which I'm really excited. Um, and also what I, what I appreciate you, if you can do in conjunction of the sharing today in celebration of the World Cancer Month, which falls on the 4th February, um, hit on the share button of this particular live so that more people could benefit on your social media by going through this very short 30 minutes streaming that I'm actually doing, all right? So thank you so much for those of you who have um, started. All right, by the way, Kim, are you able to hear me clearly as well on the streaming? All right, thank you so much. Emily has shared, thank you so much. I start to see a lot of hearts and thumbs up are floating up. That is amazing, all right. Now, today I'm gonna to talk about one very essential root that is not only good as a form of antioxidants, but it is also good to prevent cancer cells from activated. Multiple research and studies have shown how effective, in fact, this particular root, or also known as herb, that's been used for many years. And there have been multiple studies and research that's been conducted on this particular root. But first and foremost, there are three common risks when it comes to causing cancer. And I would like to share with you these three common root causes that triggers cancer cells in our body. And just to be clear, I am a nutritionist and a microbiologist. So my area of expertise is studying about how food can heal how food can be our medicine. And I'm sharing with you through also my personal experience when I was with my father as he was battling cancer and also throughout the years where we have supported numerous and multiple cancer patients. But once again, this is through only our experience and sharing. If you have a severe cancer condition, I would recommend that you consult your nearest hospital to get professional advice from your doctors. I'm only gonna cover very extensively on nutrition and food. Now, first and foremost, there are three causes of cancer and why I would like to express and share these very important three factors is that there are a lot of times I see, whether it's in social media, whether it's someone's you know, talking about cancer, there is this huge misconception where people think that cancer is a result of genetics. Well, if you look at all the studies that's been conducted by multiple universities and healthcare centers, unfortunately, genetic cancer only contributes to up to 9% globally. So the majority of 90% of cancer that we have today is contributed to our lifestyle. The man in the chat right now, lifestyle. Thank you. Hi, Ivory. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. Hi, Joyce. Thank you. All right. So lifestyle is a very big word. And as, as we look deeper into different cancer patients, as we interview them, we understand deeper not on a surface level, we found that there are common traits that is built not over the days or weeks, but over the years. So what are these three common risk factors that triggers our cancer cells to be activated? Now, just to be clear, every one of us have healthy cells, but the moment if you do not take good care of it, it will turn into inflammation, eventually leads to cancer. Root cause number one is stress. 
stress and emotional baggage comes together, it is the number one killer, not only to, for cancer, heart attacks, and many other disease. Managing your stress is really, really important. Letting go things that is taking up too much of your emotional energy, it is important. We will all have stress, but how do you manage stress is the key. You can't avoid living a life without stress, but we have to learn how to manage stress. Number two, the products that we use and apply on our skin, the way our utensils are, are used to cook our food, the type of utensils we use, our perfume, you know, our cleanser, even our deodorant that is used in the car, we are exposed to a lot of chemicals. And in fact, the amount of chemicals that a normal person is exposed to is almost 2,000 different chemicals in a day. Especially if you're a lady, your cosmetic contains almost 930 different chemicals each day when we apply on our skin. So today, I'm not going to talk about what are the best choices that you can use when it comes to cosmetics. That is a huge topic that I will cover extensively in the coming weeks in www.markleong.club. www.markleong.club. So make sure you are subscribed to my club to learn more about some of the things that you should be using, some of the things that you should be avoiding to minimize the amount of chemicals going into your body. Number three, something that I'm going to cover extensively over the next 23 minutes is what you eat. Food plays a very important part today, not only for cancer, but for many other diseases. Of course, obesity as well. But I'm not going to go in depth onto a huge variety of food. I'm only going to cover one thing. One thing that makes a huge difference, one thing that you can apply after this sharing that we are having on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. I'm going to cover on that particular route. As I mentioned briefly, that it has been conducted in terms of research studies by multiple scientists and medical professionals over the years. as shown to help to reduce the chance and risk of cancer and also preventing cancer. So let's take a good look at some of these materials that I prepared for you. Now, if you are having low energy in the morning, perhaps that could be the night before you're having a heavy meal, or it could be a, a, a situation where perhaps you are not healing fast enough. It could be many reasons. If you're having weight issues today, you're constantly having pain around your body. This is usually a sign of chronic inflammation. If you have any one of these, it is important that we start looking into our diet, our lifestyle, and the way how we manage our stress. Question that I always like to ask all my participants is, when was the last time you cleaned your gut, your intestines, your colon, Image A and B is a representation of how a dirty colon looks like, a dirty gut looks like. Image D, on the other hand, is a clean-looking colon. By the way, thank you for those of us here, Ivory, Tiger, right, Jocelyn, for sharing some of these key pointers that I'm actually going through. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. By the way, if you guys are learning so far, from this Facebook Live, um, just type in there, yes, in the comment. Type in there, yes, all right? Thank you. So I want you to imagine that this is inside your body for years, inside your intestine, your entire gut system. And there is this saying, how could someone be healthy if they are not clean in the inside, right? So 
health begins from inside out, not outside in. It's so important that we always start clearing what is in the inside now. Of course, you can't see if your bare eyes, but what you can do is you can control what are the food that we put in. Now, what happens if this is not been managed? Well, this is a diagram of how cancer cells are usually triggered and how it gets activated. So you could see here, those dark color red cells are cancer cells that are formed from our normal cells. All right, and of course, this spreads into our blood vessels and the cancer cells eventually get spread across different parts of the body. And usually when it hits our lymph nodes, that is where the bigger problem happens. So cancer happens when the cells grow abnormally in the body. Today, we all have healthy cells, but the moment your healthy cells turn unhealthy, that is where the problem starts to happen. It's really important, my friends, that I'll share with you again, that we all have control on this. Again, more than 90% of it is not genetic. It's our lifestyle. So what can you do? I want you to think about this. Look at this picture here. Imagine this dog living in a dump. Tell me, how, how do you feel if you are the dog or any animal that is sleeping just exactly like this diagram here? How would you feel? Thank you, right? Uneasy, sad, dirty, disgusted. Well, why are you allowing this to happen inside your body? By the way, congratulations to those of us who are on a detox challenge right now with me because this is an indicator that you are clearing up the mess in you. That's why I applaud for those of us who started the journey after Chinese New Year. For those of you who have not started, make sure to join us in this very important month throughout the entire March where we all start to detoxify our body. But in this Facebook Live, I'm going to share with you a simple thing that you can do as well to cleanse your body. Let's go back. Now, think about this. You can't basically jump into another bowl of clean water if you are in a polluted water. But what you can do is that you can change the water in your body. And that is why it is so important. Right? Jolene says miserable. You're absolutely right. Some of you say suffocating. <laughs> Ivory says pity the dog. But don't you think it's sad when you see a lot of people, they are not aware that this is inside their body. Right? So what we want to do is we want to help our body to change the water. We want to preserve the clean water so that you have a clean system inside your body. Now, there are eight ways that you can detoxify your body. Now, just to begin with, again, I want to clarify this for those who are non-revival members because there's a lot of misconception. Detoxification is mainly conducted by our organs, like your liver, your gallbladder, your kidneys. These mediums are the methods to help our body to detoxify much more effectively. But be very cautious of the one that I've colored in red box, which are supplements, because often what supplement does is that it adds on more chemical and stress to your liver and your kidneys. So definitely this is not one of the methods that I would recommend to anyone or everyone. But in fact, the remaining methods are truly powerful and beneficial. I will go in that food detox next month because there are also a lot of gimmicks and fake food detox that is available in the market. What are the legit ways of doing a food detox? So step one that we all need to do is stop putting chemicals into your body, which is the main thing that is so important. But today, I'm not going to talk about things that you apply outside of your skin. I'm talking about what we put into our body. I'm going to cover extensively in the Mark Leung Dog Club on what are the cosmetics that we should avoid or we can avoid and what are the sub, sub, substitutes for it. 
All right. So now let me just go into the next part here on the eight chemicals. Everyone type in that eight right now, just um, to let me know that you guys are still with me on this Facebook Live sharing. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad to know that um, the Facebook Live is still progressing well. So these are the eight chemicals that are usually a form that goes into our body through our food. And this is where cancer today is becoming more and more common, right? Ask yourself, think about this. During our parents' and our grandparents' time, has it been so common that you hear someone get cancer? It's becoming so, so common now that almost everyone in a room would have cancer. What has changed in our environment? One of the large changes is the way our food is made. So, anyone here drinks tea? If you are a tea drinker, type in there. Me, if you occasionally drink tea, just type in there sometimes. Thank you. All right, we got quite a number of you that who are tea drinkers. Very good. All right. So, today I want to ask you this question. Are you drinking low quality and chemical tea? Because if this is something that you are doing, then it is important that you start looking into it. So there are three types of teas that you must avoid buying or drinking when you're outside. Everyone type in there, three. All right, three. All right, so these are the three teas that I'm going to summarize for you. Number one, is always go for loose tea leaves. It is usually in a can or in a box. Avoid those tea leaves that are already grinded or blended into a powder form, unless if it's just matcha. Apart from matcha, also known as green tea, do go for loose tea leaves. Due to the fact that majority of the commercial teas out there they are not 100% made of tea leaves, but they are made of different fillers, like the branches of the tree, other flowers, corn canals, and some even scraps. And that is sad. Imagine you are drinking rubbish rather than tea. Number two, by the way, what is the difference here? You can see the difference of the profile between loose and tea bags. So go for loose tea leaf. Ivory says here, go for loose tea leaf. Thank you. Right. Number two, go for avoid non-organic teas. Non-organic teas are the worst form of teas. And most people would say, Mark, why? What happens? What happens if I'm drinking a non-organic tea? Now, I want you to imagine this. Would you, if today you buy any, any vegetable, whether it's a kale or spinach, and assuming that you have a mosquito repellent at home, you spray that mosquito repellent on your spinach for three days, morning and night, morning and night, three days, six times. Now, if I were to tell you, okay, after that, you can just rinse your spinach in water or probably soak it in salt water, Question, would you dare to eat that spinach despite you have already rinsed it with water and also feed that spinach to your family? Comment in the chat right now, no. If you are definitely not going to be eating that spinach even though you have already washed it with water. Comment in there, let me know. How many of us are definitely not going to eat that spinach? <laughs> right, absolutely. What is this example here? Doesn't this sound a bit strange when we will not eat our own vegetables that we spray with a repellent at home. But on the other hand, we are eating vegetables outside that are loaded with at least six types of chemicals, your fungicides, herbicides, pesticides. There's so many sorts of chemicals that are sprayed on majority of our vegetables and fruits. Tea leaves is one of them. Let me show you an example of how a tea plantation looks like. This picture is taken in Sri Lanka from one of the world's largest tea distributors. And you can see 
the amazing, beautiful lady here, what she's doing here is she's literally plucking out tea leaves. Now, look at these tea leaves. They have no protection. And this is where tea leaves are all covering or covered with chemicals. And when it goes through a drying process, next, it goes into your cup. So number two is always to avoid non-organic teas. Go for organic tea leaves to be safe. Number three, flavored teas. This is one of the worst form of teas that anyone could drink. Not only is it loaded with artificial flavorings, it is also loaded with artificial colorings. So what are some of the examples of flavored teas here? Masala tea commonly are flavored teas. The amount of masala inserted in there is very minimal. You also see blueberry teas, lemon teas or fruit teas in such packaging. Have you seen any of these before? Type in there, yes, if you have. Comment in there, yes, if you have. Thank you. So these are some of the teas that are very common, commonly found usually in the hotels where they give us complimentary. You will find that used in most of the restaurants, some airlines perhaps, or convenient places. This is, I call it the no quality teas. So avoid this. Now, I'm going to go in next into some of the world's amazing teas that are available and along with what is the function on health properties or health benefits that it brings to you. These are the six common Japanese teas that are widely available in most places. If you have seen or tasted any of these teas, just comment in the chat. Let me know which one have you drank before. I'm sure matcha or also green tea is something that most people would have drank before, as well as sancha. All right. Yep. Thank you. Great. Okay. So many have drank matcha. What else? Okay. All right. Thank you. Chinese tea is here. Something that we usually get served when we go for our dim sum or Chinese restaurants. Right, so this black tea is definitely very good and oolong tea as well, right? And of course, on the other functional teas, these are teas that are used for multiple health reasons. So there are over 300 over different types of teas around the world. I just wanted to share with you this different variety of teas so that you understand the common ones that you can easily find in where you're living and what are the amazing health benefits. But today, I want to I wanna talk about one very powerful herb, a powerful tea that we encourage our students, our patients, our clients at Farms Asia to consume, something that I consume, something that has been used by many natural paths, many holistic wellness healers, around the world, not only in the East, but also in the West widely. So what is this herb and tea that you should have in your kitchen? I call it the dandelion tea. If you have never heard of dandelion, type in there one. If you have heard of dandelion or if you are revival here, type in there two. Thank you. Let's go in and see which are the best parts of dandelion tea that you should be making. So dandelion is this beautiful flower which looks like this. And understand that this entire beautiful plant or herb has two parts of it that can be used as a tea. The commonly used ones are the dandelion leaves. The not so common one are the dandelion roots. And even with the roots itself, they are roasted and non-roasted. So let's take a good look at what are the amazing nutritional benefits that it brings to us when you consume this. Well, these are the top five amazing nutrients that you would enjoy from every cup of dandelion root or tea that you drink. It is rich in better 
carotene, which is good for our eyes, is loaded with vitamin A, B, C, D, and E. And there are multiple minerals such as iron, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, zinc, and even polyphenols. It is also high in antioxidants, and that is where it helps to prevent our body to go into that inflamed mode, to reduce the inflammation, to avoid any chance of getting cancer cells activated. So this is the two types of tea that you can find outside when it comes to the dandelion herb. On the left side here, you could see what are the health benefits for and also the taste for somebody that prefers something mild and sweet, almost similar to drinking your chrysanthemum tea. On the right side would be something that I recommend for any one of us here who are cutting away coffee, right? Those of us who are in the detox that you are cutting away coffee, this is a good replacement because it has a slightly bitter taste and, but it is really, really great for your liver and also tame inflammation. So both of these amazing part of the herbs has great benefits. My personal favorite is roasted dandelion root. Make sure to go for this. Now, before that, I'm also going to share with you how you can prepare and what is the recommended safe amount to consume. Followed by, I'm going to go in into what are the other amazing health benefits. Now, by the way, because this is just a 30 minutes Facebook live streaming, some of you, you know, came in here earlier, some of you came in, in between. Thank you so much for being here. You know, let me know if you love for me to conduct more of this live streaming on my Facebook page or Instagram. Comment in there, love it, right? Um, so that I know that if you are loving it, uh, I'll get my team to help me schedule more Facebook lives on nutritional tips for your health so that all of us can apply great things at home through our food. All right, thank you so much. Now let's come back. What or how much can you consume, right? So take a good look here. This is how you can make your own detox tea or your own dandelion tea, right? So first and foremost, always wash or rinse off your flowers, your leaves and your roots. Never boil it. Steep it in hot water for 15 to 20 minutes. This is really, really important, right? Jacqueline says, I love the Facebook Live. Thank you, Jacqueline. Glad to see you here. All right. Now, and again, for roots that are roasted, make sure you wash it thoroughly due to the fact that some herbal shops cover it with sulfur. And what you want to do is you want to chop it into, a, into fine pieces, just like your ginseng, right? And heat it up on an oven first, right? For about two hours, top and bottom heat, all right? And then steep it again, right? Into hot water for about 10 minutes. You can consume this tea, all right? About four to 10 grams daily for the leaves. For the roots, two to eight grams. Once or twice a day is perfect. That will be the recommended consumption. I've summarized that in one of the segments here. I'm going to go through that. So why dandelion tea? Apart from all those incredible nutritional benefits that I've shared, number one, it is very effective to help with kidney detoxification. It helps to pass urine, reduces water retention. So if you are someone that consumes a lot of animal protein, a lot of salty food, Right, to avoid it being crystallizing in your kidneys, this is a tea that helps. Number two, liver detoxification. If you're starting to feel very tired, you're starting to feel like you know, you're, you're constantly low in energy, your urine is very cloudy and smelly, right? and you've got bad skin, pigmentation, it is a sign that your liver is not functioning well. Then this tea is going to be perfect. Number three, Good coffee substitute, as I mentioned, right? And the best part is it has zero caffeine. Number four, it has amazing antioxidant agents and anti-inflammatory agents to help your body to regenerate healthy cells. Number five, amazing for our skin health. 
Again, it's not about what cosmetic you apply on your skin, but it is what you consume inside. And it also helps to increase minimal levels of collagen production. How many of you would like a beautiful skin? Type in there, I want. Okay. Now, if this is what you want, beautiful skin, slowing down aging, this is amazing. Anyone here who wants to manage your blood sugar levels, it improves insulin sensitivity as well. And finally, the last two benefits, seven is aids in your digestion because it stimulates the production of saliva and gastric juices so that your body is able to digest much effectively. And of course, amazing, after meals, if you want to prevent your stomach from being bloated, this is one of the top foods that I recommend to help reduce bloatness in digestion and even constipation. This is a chart on the summary of the leaves and the roots in terms of the recommended dosage that is safe for anyone and everyone to consume on a daily basis of not more than twice a day when you steep it in a beautiful pot of clean filtered water. So these are the amazing information that I have for all of you who are following my page. For those of you who have not followed me and my page, make sure you click on the follow button so that you are notified whenever I do any lives and you are then also receiving and able to see the daily posts on nutritional and health tips that me and my team will put out on a daily basis. Make sure to also subscribe to my YouTube. The link is in the chat so that you are able to see also amazing contents that I post out every week, at least four times a week on health benefits that you can get through your food. All right, so thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to take some questions here before I end the live, by the way. Let me know if you guys have enjoyed this very short, precise session. Comment in there, enjoy. Um, let me know if you guys have loved it. And by the way, if you have you know, just joined and you love what I've just shared, I would really appreciate if you could hit on the share button so that more people are able to benefit from this sharing that I have. All right. So um, some of you are asking here, is it safe to consume this tea during the 23 days detox? Absolutely, it is highly recommended. All right. Okay, let's scroll up the chat so that I can look at some of the questions here again. Um, Jasmine says where to buy. I would recommend you to check out at your organic shops to make sure that you are actually getting you know, organic tea leaves, as I mentioned. Okay, let's go down now. Let's see. I think there's one from Serena here. Okay, all right. By the way, everyone, the click on the subscribe button on the YouTube as I'm sharing new videos tomorrow as well, if you have not subscribed to it. Okay, uh, Serena says, thank you, Mark, for sharing nutrition and health tips. You are the best. You are the best. Thank you all of you for, for supporting our work at Farm Asia and my work. Um, you know, the more I see that you guys are benefiting from it by doing it, um, the more it excites me to share more. All right. Um, Tiger says, yes, recommended by the angels when you first did the detox, that's amazing. I'm so glad. All right. I'm um, suing. Suitable for pregnant women? I would suggest that it is actually safe for the early trimester, but I recommend that you discuss this with your gynae. All right. Okay. Mostly most. My moon. All right. For someone who has just been diagnosed with colon cancer, can she take this? Yes, my moon. This is absolutely safe. And in fact, it is great as well. Great. All right. Okay, um, let me see here. Another question here from Tiger. Okay, oops, let's go down. Okay, how about the organic dandelion leaf and root from farms? Yes, that is fully imported um, and it is organic, organically certified safe. All right. And one of the best premium qualities. Okay, Calvin, can we drink the Puka brand dandelion tea? 